So it's an honor to be here today. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out to hear me talk about this book called Letters from a Soviet Prison. To start, I'm going to talk a little bit about this movie that some people have seen and some people probably haven't. Who in the audience has seen the movie Bridge of Spies? So it looks like about half. Who has not seen it? Okay, a little less than half. Now, when I found out about this movie, Bridge of Spies, and of all people, Spielberg was going to do this movie, a rumor, I'm thinking, oh, why would he do this? He has no reason to do this movie that would portray my father. And my first thought was, how do you get in touch with Steven Spielberg? <laughs> you just can't pick up the phone. Hey, Steve, I've got an idea. Everybody wants a piece of him. Everybody wants to pitch some Hollywood thriller to him. I was able to get a call back as a result of my email from Mark Platt. Mark Platt was the producer on this film. He's better known for his production of Wicked on Broadway. Mark and I talked for about an hour uh, on or about July 15th of 2014. At the end of the conversation, I think he liked what I had to say. He offered to hire me on as a technical consultant. So I said, sure, I'd love to do this. I get the contract in the mail. I start reading through it. It's boilerplate. I'm to answer questions. I'm to provide audio tapes or film of my father talking about his experiences so they can listen firsthand to what he had gone through. I'm to go on set as required to be on set and, and consult as necessary. At the very end of the contract, it says, they don't have to listen to me. <laughs> hmm. The very last sentence, if I don't like the end result, I can't sue. So my father, after four and a half years of missions, has flown 27 successful missions. At this time, uh, in about 1960, he's one of the most experienced pilots, the most number of hours in the aircraft. He is selected to fly the May 1st mission. This mission is going to fly across the entire width of the former Soviet Union, from Peshawar, Pakistan, over Sverdlovsk, to Buda, Norway, above the Arctic Circle. It's approximately a nine-hour flight, some 2,400 miles. He's four hours into his mission. He's at an altitude of 70,500 feet over the city of Sverdlovsk in the central part of the former Soviet Union. There, there's a bright orange flash that lights up the exterior of the canopy. A shock wave hits the plane, pushes the plane forward, throws my dad back in his seat. Then on February 10th, a cold, dark, foggy morning, right out of a John Le Carré novel, two spies on each side of the Glenniker Bridge in Potsdam, Germany. On one side of the bridge is a KGB spy, Rudolf Abel, with his CIA and FBI entourage. On the other side is my father with his KGB entourage. They are positively ID'd. They walk home to their respective freedoms. Rudolf Abel returns home, a hero of the Soviet Union, a parade in his honor, postage stamps in his likeness. My father returns home to an American public that doesn't really know what to make of this event. I moved to Virginia in 92 to continue my research, National Archives, uh, CIA retiree associations, trying to find out more information about my father and the U2 incident. I was at George Mason University going through my graduate degree. I started to give lectures to high school students in the area. Nine times out of 10, I'd walk into a classroom to give a talk on the U2 incident, get blank stares from the kids. They thought I was there to talk about the U2 rock band. <laughs> yes. This was the first clue that something had to be done to preserve Cold War history. Uh, the, the film emphasizes Rudolf Abel's attorney, and you haven't mentioned um, the attorney that, that I recall as Carl McIntyre ah. from Southwest Virginia. Could you comment on his role? Sure, yes. Um, the lady's asking about Carl McAfee. Carl McAfee was an attorney in Southwest Virginia. His law practice was above my grandfather's shoe shop in Norton. So when uh, my grandfather gets wind that his boy's been shot down, he goes up to Carl and goes, Carl, help, what do I do? So Carl and my grandfather worked together, tried to figure out a way to release my father. Um, Carl is trying to get in touch with my dad, but there is no communication allowed from outside sources. Um, my father's legal defense team consisted of a Soviet a defense attorney 
who was basically the court-appointed attorney. And one distinction I want to mention is that in America, you are innocent until proven guilty. In the Soviet Union, you were guilty until proven innocent. Little distinction there. Um, now, the attorney that represented my father did not once object to any question that was asked. Basically, nodded his head, and my father was up on stage in the docket doing his best to prevent the release of information and to make sure that he conducted himself accordingly. Um, Carl McAfee did help my grandfather tremendously, but did not have any access to my father to represent him. 